Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on solving equations containing fractions. Here's what you'll learn. How to solve one-step equations that contain fractions. The goal in solving equations is to find a solution. If your equation contains a variable, a letter, you're trying to solve for the value of that variable. And to solve for a variable, you must isolate the variable. That means we want to get the variable, or the letter, all by itself on one side of the equation. Your equation should end up looking like this. The variable equals a number. For example, p equals 16. Now let's take a look at some examples. Let's solve k plus 1 fifth equals 3 fifths and express the answer in simplest form. We start by writing down the equation. k plus one-fifth equals three-fifths. Now in order to isolate the variable k, we have to cancel out all of the numbers on the same side of the equation with the k. In this case we only have one number and it's a fraction one-fifth. What operation is being performed with one-fifth? Did you say addition? If you did, you're correct the one-fifth is being added to k. So to remove or cancel the one-fifth from the left side, we need to perform the opposite or inverse operation using one-fifth, and that's subtraction. So let's go ahead and subtract one-fifth from both sides to keep our equation balanced. I'll put minus one-fifth on the left and subtract one-fifth on the right. Now the one-fifth is canceled out on the left side because one-fifth minus one-fifth is zero and that leaves us with just our variable k isolated on the left. On the right side now we have three-fifths minus one-fifth and since the denominators are the same, both are fives, that means we can go ahead and subtract the numerators, three minus one, and that will give us two in the numerator over five. The fraction two-fifths is already in simplest form, so k equals two-fifths is our answer. Now don't forget, on problems like this, you can always plug your answer back into the original equation to see if you got it right. If you get the same number on both sides of the equation, your answer is correct. Now let's solve n minus three-eighths equals negative one-sixteenth, again expressing the answer in simplest form. Start by writing down the equation, n minus three-eighths equals negative one-sixteenth. Now in order to isolate the variable n, we have to cancel out the fraction three-eighths. What operation is being performed with three-eighths? This time our fraction three-eighths is being subtracted from the variable n. So to remove the three-eighths from that side, we need to perform the opposite or inverse operation using three-eighths. This time it's going to be addition. So let's add three-eighths to both sides to keep our equation balanced. So I'll put plus three-eighths on the left and plus three-eighths on the right. Now the three-eighths is canceled out on the left side, leaving us with just our variable n isolated on that side. And on the right side we have negative one-sixteenth plus three-eighths, which we can't add directly right now since the denominators are different. We need to find a common denominator for sixteen and eight before we can add those two fractions together. Since the smaller denominator 8 divides evenly into the larger denominator 16, we can use 16 as our common denominator, and that's a great thing, because the first fraction gets to remain the same. We don't have to change it. So let's rewrite negative 1 16th, our first fraction. However, we do have to change the second fraction. We need an equivalent fraction for 3 eighths with 16 as the denominator. 
So let's write our second fraction with 16 in the denominator right now and we'll figure out what the numerator has to be. Now we multiplied 8 by 2 to get the 16. So that means we have to multiply the 3 in the numerator by 2 as well and that will give us 6 in the numerator of our equivalent fraction. Now that we have common denominators we can add negative 1 and 6 together and that's going to give us 5 in the numerator over 16. The fraction 5 sixteenths is already in simplest form. So n equals 5 sixteenths is our answer. Now let's solve 1 sixth x equals 3 tenths. Start by writing down the equation 1 sixth x equals 3 tenths. In order to isolate the variable x, we need to cancel out the fraction 1 sixth. Now what operation is being performed with 1 sixth? If you don't know, just read what's on the left side of the equation. That side reads as 1 sixth times x, so it's multiplication. To remove the 1 sixth from that side now, we need to perform the opposite or inverse operation using 1 sixth and that's going to be division. So let's divide both sides by 1 sixth to keep our equation balanced. So I'll divide by 1 sixth on the left and divide by 1 sixth on the right. Now the 1 sixth is cancelled out on the left side leaving us with our isolated variable x. And on the right side we have 3 tenths divided by 1 sixth. Now when we divide fractions, I always turn them into multiplication problems. And we do that by using keep, change, flip. Here's how you do it. Keep the first fraction as it is, so we'll rewrite 3 tenths. Change the operation from division to multiplication. And finally, flip the second fraction to get its reciprocal. So 1 over 6 becomes 6 over 1. Now that we have fractions we're multiplying together, are there any numbers in the numerator and denominator that can be reduced to make our multiplication easier? Take a look at the numbers. The answer is yes. 6 and 10 have a common factor of 2. So we can reduce those numbers by dividing each by 2. 10 divided by 2 will turn the 10 into a 5. 6 divided by 2 will turn the 6 into a 3. Now those are the only numbers that can be reduced, so we can go ahead and start multiplying. We multiply the numerators 3 times 3 together, that gives us 9 in the numerator of our answer, and multiply the denominators 5 and 1 together to get 5 in the denominator of our answer. Now our answer is improper fraction form. It's 9 over 5. We want to turn that into a mixed number. And we do that by dividing. So 9 divided by 5 is 1. And we get a remainder of 4 for the numerator of our fraction over 5. So x equals 1 and 4 fifths. Now let's solve d divided by 3 equals 5 eighteenths. Again we start by writing down the equation d over 3 equals 5 eighteenths. Now in order to isolate the variable d, we need to cancel out the 3 on the same side of the equation. Now what operation is being performed with 3? Now if it isn't obvious, again, just read the left side of the equation. It reads as d divided by 3. So it's a division problem over there. The opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3. The numbers on the left now cancel, leaving us with just our isolated variable d on the left hand side. Now on the right side I'm going to turn 3 into a fraction by putting it over 1. So let's rewrite the problem on the right as 5 over 18 times 3 over 1. Now that we're multiplying fractions again, 
Are there any numbers in the numerator and denominator that we can reduce to make the multiplication easier? Take a look at the numbers. The answer is yes. 18 and 3 have a common factor of 3. So we can reduce both of those numbers by dividing each by 3. 18 divided by 3 turns the 18 into a 6, and 3 divided by 3 will turn the 3 into a 1. Those are the only numbers that can be reduced, so now we can go ahead and multiply the numerators together. 5 times 1 will give us 5 in the numerator of our answer, and multiply the denominators 6 and 1. 6 times 1 gives us 6 in the denominator of our answer. The fraction 5 sixths is already in simplest form, so d equals 5 sixths is our answer. Let's wrap up this presentation with a word problem. The total distance around a square is 8 elevenths of a foot. What is the length of each side? Well, we have to start with an expression that we can solve. We know a square has four sides. So if we multiplied the length of one side by four, we would have the perimeter of, or the total distance, around our square. So let's go ahead and set up the problem now. Four times the length of each side. Now that's what we don't know is the length of each side. So let's call that s. So four times s, we can write that down to start, has to equal the total distance around the square, and that's 8 elevenths of a foot. So we'll write down 4s equals 8 elevenths. Now in order to isolate the variable s, we need to cancel out the 4 on the same side of the equation. What operation is being performed with the 4? Again, if you don't know, read the left side. It reads as 4 times s, so it's multiplication. And the opposite operation to multiplication is division. So let's divide both sides by the number 4 that we have to cancel out. Now on the left side, the 4's cancel out, leaving us with our variable s isolated on that side. And on the right side, I'm going to turn the 4 into a fraction by putting it over 1. So I'm going to change 4 to 4 over 1. Now we have a division problem with two fractions, and I'm going to turn that into a multiplication problem using keep, change, flip. What we do is keep the first fraction as is. So I'll rewrite the 8 over 11, change division to multiplication, and finally flip the second fraction to get its reciprocal. So 4 over 1 will become 1 over 4. Now that we're multiplying two fractions together, are there any numbers in the numerator and denominator that can be reduced to make the multiplying easier? Take a look at the numbers. Again, the answer is yes. 8 and 4 have a common factor of 4. So we can reduce both of those numbers by dividing each by 4. So 8 divided by 4 changes the 8 into a 2. 4 divided by 4 changes the 4 into a 1. With no other numbers that can be reduced, our answer will already be in simplest form, and we can go ahead and multiply now. 2 times 1 in the numerator gives us a numerator answer of 2, and multiplying 11 and 1 in the denominator gives us an 11 in the denominator of our answer. So the length of each side of our square is 2 elevenths of a foot. Congratulations! You've learned how to solve one-step equations that contain fractions.